Welcome to the arena of the supernatural, where supernatural is always natural. It is always a pleasure. Ogutsi singene ka makaya eno silete ki vangeli lengas mulo ga Christu Jesu ge. Kule zi intugu ge silete lo na ge izul kan kulo kulo eliti ge intugu ze gazmulo. These are the days of glory. And namsha nigle lisonto ge ge sizo kala ngo prophet William Ondi. Si azugut besi ba na ge ekatine zetu lege. And sizo ba na sizo vula lisonto ba ge tisonto liminandi sonto na mandla isonto la kebegelu on November. Ya chela we na ge isinto iso pendo isinto iso ba minandi isinto iso ba zinke. And ge uzo ba kuchege when you are going to be blessed. Let's allow the men of God to minister to us. Kuluma gekunze, ugoti manga bi yonki we kubanjani, manga bi yonki we kubanjani ge, and uzo kaza ge akazi sana mululi sisi, ugoto songi zinto ge. Engtando ushuguti please, slande le ni bageti ge la pana ge kuma social network, go Facebook, and as to a, to a like our page and share our page with your friends and also la pana go Instagram, uzo ti swane msomi, even go YouTube, uti swane msomi, and eno kati. Then you're gonna be blessed, and also, and as na app la pana la baba na ma Android. Download our app, you will see in Kondozet. You will be blessed. I'm telling you, this over modified and libeli she i e di e i lokuge i app i e tuge na iso wazu connecta zonke zeto sailonge sa space wa yoge actually I'm talking about the little no car radio way to get back into it. I'm sorry, so way to learn online radio. I know you're gonna be blessed. Okay, please subscribe on our YouTube channel. We will see you again. Get ready, smile. We love you. I know you're gonna be blessed. Please, just let me know when you're back. It's eight o'clock. Zeyasha. Mhm. Na six a.m. Okay. Six a.m. Or six o'clock. Manga bui misile. Or ishwe bega nine o'clock. Or eight o'clock. You're gonna be blessed. May God bless you. We love you. Shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken in this time of coronavirus. We love you. All right. Um, today, I just, I just want to speak on something that is so important that I don't want people to be moving as I'm speaking this. I want you to sit and listen because this will change your life completely. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, this is very important. It's in receiving the grace. Hallelujah. All right. I, one day we went to one camp, and, and there were three, two guest speakers. Um, I was the third one preaching on that, in that camp. And then in the next thing, um, they told me that uh, I, that. Uh, they like the arrangement, the administration of the church, the arrangement. They said, um, um, they, they gave me my schedule when I'm preaching and all this, all this, all the things. And then they told me, uh, and then the arrangement was, was I'll, I'll not come to the service of another guest speaker. So that was the arrangement, so that they cannot have much burden or something. I'm, I don't know. So, so I just decided to pitch up. I decided to pitch up in the service. And then the pastor, you loved it, and, the, you, you, the, and we, I sat there, I sat there, and when the preacher was preaching, I was crying tears. I was crying tears. I was like, Lord, I never in my life yet a message so awesome like this, and I need it for myself. I needed it for myself. If I would have sat in, the, in, the, in my room, I was gonna miss out on this. I needed the message for myself. And then after the service, now I walked to this, to this guest, to this Adam, to this, uh, to this man, and I'm like, hey, I really need you to come and preach in my church. And, and, um, and we started speaking, and then he says, I just came to preach for my friend here. The, the, the camp was a camp that was done by one brother from Deben. So he did it in, he did it in uh, Limpombo. So, so the, the thing is, I said, I said, I need you to come to my, my church. And where are you from? So we started talking. And then he says, hey, I'm from Cape Town and all this thing. He says, but I cannot come and preach in your church. I was like, why? You're kidding, awesome word. There was a way to change me, then you can change my people. 
And they said, no, I resigned from ministry. How like, can you resign from ministry? What are you preaching? Amen. He said, no, I just did it for my, for my friend, but I used to be a pastor, then I resigned. And tears now started coming. I was like, I was really touched. He said to him, and then he said, I did many mistakes, and there was a lot of accusation around him. And, uh, and then he said, the people slandered him, pushed him down, everything. So he ended up giving up and stayed and he bought his farm. He bought his farm in Cape Town. So he's living in Mosa, Mosa, Mosa Bear, something like that. He said, I bought my farm there, then I'm living in there and I'm just managing my farm and all those things. I'm looking after the sheep. I'm no longer looking after the people. I'm serious, I'm serious. This is what I, I, I heard this from the preacher. Then I said, I'm, I'm, you can, and then in my heart, I was like, hey, this man, he, 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 he pulled the bag because of accusation. I won't accuse him. I won't be another accuser. So I just said, all right, um, I'll take your number anytime you feel so free. We'll keep talking. Anytime you feel so free, you can come and preach in my church. We'll bless you. We'll, become, we'll honor you. And, and you know what? As I got in my hotel room, I felt this this, uh, this anointing and everything, I cr and I was crying before God for such a preacher. And I said, hey, such person is carrying an awesome word, but the people push him out. What is it, Lord? And, and over years, everywhere I travel, God said to me, he said, William, everywhere you travel, um, I want you to also tell the people the value of the gifts that I've given them. The value of the preachers that God gave you. The value of the gifts you have. Amen. This is very important. Are you with me? All right, and we're going to come back to this story, but just forget it at the moment. Uh, go with me in the book of um, Psalms. Or let's start with the book of Proverbs 14. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. Proverbs 14. Someone say, the value of the gifts. If you get in Proverbs 14, just say, amen. amen. All right, wait for the preacher, man. All right, sorry that I'm, I'm just myself here. Yeah, I feel at home. <laughs> I'm not acting any movie. All right, Proverbs 14. Oh, Proverbs 4. Yeah, praise God. Oh, Lord, help this preacher now. I said Proverbs what? Oh, 14 verse 4. All right. My wife knows the message. That's why I said Proverbs 14 verse 4. Praise the Lord. All right, where no oxen are, the scrip is, is empty. That means it is clean. But in much increase of the crop comes by the strength of the ox. Go with me in the book of Psalms 144 verse 14. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you ready to, to, to hear good news now? Psalms 144, verses 14. Say the value of the gifts. Is everyone hearing me or you want me to preach in Zulu? All right. Verse 14. Verse 14. He says, when our oxen, look, look, I'm going to read it, uh, 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 King James. It says, that our oxen may be strong to labor, that there be no breaking in, no going out, that there be no complaint in our street. He's saying that our oxen may be strong to labor, so that they cannot be breaking in, and so that they cannot be going out, that we might 
so that there might be no complaint in our streets. Amen. All right, you drive around here. You see people complaining in their cars. Oh, we don't have this. They complain. Most of the people are complaining, even working, they're complaining. Most of the people complain when they're working than in their bedrooms. I know most of people, you know that people complain in the bedroom, but they complain also when they're working. They complain more when they're working and when they're driving on the streets, there is a complaint. Shortage. There is shortage in the house. There are fights. There is everything. People are complaining. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And they complain in the streets. And the Bible now tells us that what will make complaint to stop is that our oxen to be strong. Our oxen. Someone say oxen. All right, so now he's saying, um, Proverbs, Proverbs uh, 14, verse 4, he says, Where there is no oxen, the strip is keen. All right, it's the strip you can put in our nowadays and say the bank account is nothing, it's empty because there is no oxen. Amen. Where there is no oxen, the bank account is keen. There is nothing in the bank, on the bank account. And then he says, he says, but much increase, that means when you want increase in your life, much increase is by the strength, someone says strength, of the ox. So he says, when the oxen has a strength, there will be much increase. How many here want much increase? I'm not just talking of increase, I'm talking of much increase. When we talk of much increase, church, we are talking, when we talk of increase, we are talking of, let's say you're getting paid, 30,000. If you get paid 31,000, it's called what? Increase. But if, you, if from 30,000 and you move to 120,000, it's not called increase. It's called much increase. That means your increase multiplied. Because of what? Because your oxen is strong. So people are trying to get increase, but they forget the oxen. Why? But the Bible tells us that the much increase is by the strength of the ox. So when the oxen is strong, then there will be much increase. Some say much increase. Much increase. Say much increase. much increase. So when the oxen is strong, we see people working in much increase. But when the oxen is so weak, and the oxen worry to be weak, is because of the person who owns the oxen. If you feed your oxen, then your oxen become so strong. If you discourage your oxen, then your oxen doesn't work for you. All right, all right, why does the Bible say oxen? I will show you the oxen thing. Don't worry, don't worry. Just look at you. Everyone here, we know oxen. We call it inkabi. You also say the same. Inkabi. Inkabi is strong. Then you will have increase. But there will be nothing. So now what is this in Gabi? Look at this church. The oxen the Bible is talking about. That's why when you talk of an ox, there is a cow. There is just a cow, a, a lady cow. It's not talking about the lady cow. It's not talking about the, it's talking about, it's not talking about the bull. Because a bull is not, made, is not meant to work for you. It works for yourself. Ah, you didn't hear me. Am I right? A bull works for yourself. That's why you see a bull always go around bullying. But an oxen is for you, for you for, for to, 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 to treat your ground. It doesn't benefit itself. It benefits you. An oxen it comes and if I, get, if I get talk or whatever. Am I right? And then, it, and then the oxen works on, the, on your farm. Then the next thing, you start seeing produce. The next thing, you say, I know Jesus now. Why? Because someone is working on your farm. Yes. Ah, you didn't hear me. Yes. You start seeing fruits multiplying in your life because there is an oxen. But if you don't have an oxen, it's like, oh, I don't have anything happening. And if you have an oxen and the oxen is not fed very well, you also starve. You're getting this. This is the Bible church. That's why every time when he speaks about an oxen, then he goes on and says, a witness. Why? Because the oxen is not talking about those ox. He is talking about people. 
Or go with me in the book of 1 Corinthians 9. Someone say, Lord, reveal my oxen. You know, you know, can I tell you something, church? I grew up, uh, I thank God that we pre today I'm preaching in people that you might have the same culture as, as uh, the way I come from. You know what? Our culture, I grew up under the, my grandfather. My grandfather was a rich guy. He had many cattle. Many, so many. Hallelujah. He had so many cattle, my grandfather. My grandfather, he was, a, he was a, just a successful man. But he couldn't, he, uh, the, this man, he was, he was so strong. And one day, one day, I, because I was coming from, from what you call, what you call town. I was coming from town going to the rural area. And then one day I hit one cackle. And my grandfather, he did not like, he did not like me again. He ate this cow that was kept very nice. You know it. Like that, in, in, in our language, you say, in, in Komo Yamajos. Hold on, forget, forget. I'm not saying go and get something like that. But he ate this one that was taking care of it, that was like innocent. You know, all right, if you're not coming from there, don't forget. But, uh, but uh, yeah, this one that uh, he was watching over it, and that's the one that was causing others to multiply. But it wasn't doing anything. It was a spiritual affair. And it was causing him to multiply. Amen. Amen. And then I came to church. I found, when I got born again, I found the church very poor. Oh, my God. And I'm like, hey. What's the problem here? What's the problem? And I found the church very poor. I was like, hey, but my grandfather is he has a, a, a cow that he takes care of and he's successful. He's successful. But the church, we, we look like. And then God said to me, this is what God said to me. One day when I was starting the word, he said, if you can know your cow, your oxen, and start feeding it, then I started reading in the Bible, and it said, look like your grandfather. Your grandfather was using wrong stuff. But in the Bible, there is an oxen. And then I started looking for the oxen. Then I saw these scriptures. I saw these scriptures. I saw these scriptures. Then this, the light began to shine. Amen. The light began to shine so clear. Amen. Praise God. Can I show you? Can I tell you something, church? There is what is called an ox. Now look, go with me in the book of 1 Corinthians 9. Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians 9. When you get there, say amen. amen. All right, now look at this. Now I'm showing you your ox. For Look at this. He says, for it is written in the law of Moses, thou shalt not mouse the ox, the mouth of the ox that you traded out your corn. Do God care for the oxen? No. Amen. Or say ye all together for our sake, for the sake no doubt, this is written, that he that plow should plow in hope, and he that traded in the, in the, in hope should be partake of his hope. Now look at this. Paul here is saying, he's now coming with this subject of the ox again. He says, we have the oxen. We shouldn't cover the oxen's mouth. And then he says, and then he tells us that who are those oxen? He says, the preachers of the gospel. The preachers of the gospel. Someone said the preachers of the gospel. So now, now look at this. In the New Testament, in the life of Christ, we have the preachers of the gospel. Those are all our oxen. You see, and, and you know what? And when I looked at that preacher at the camp, I saw how his own people killed him, destroyed him, and accused him. And then you end up picking his things and went and bought the farm and sat on the farm now. He's no longer preaching. He's no longer doing anything. 
a man with the awesome word from God, destroyed by his own people, destroyed by the people. Instead of the people taking advantage of feeding their own oxen and the oxen work for them. This is very important, church. How many here know that Jesus loves you? How many here knows that you're forgiven? Who told you? Preacher, your pastor. And then I say, oh no, this is not grace. This is grace. That's why someone here to come and tell you. Are you with me, somebody? Someone told you all this stuff that you think now you know. Someone told you, read your Bible. Someone told you, he said, you, Jesus loves you. It's grace to know that you have people that can tell you the truth. And, but you don't, are not supposed to forget those people. Are you with me? So, you find people say, oh no, this is not New Testament. But who told you this is a New Testament? Who told you that? It's a preacher. He had to give himself time to look for the New Testament. And he came and showed you. Now you say, now, now, now the preacher, now you, you, you hammer that preacher. But the point is, he is one who told you this New Testament. So don't use that grace to abuse that preacher. Because he's one who told you this grace. Ah. Ah. Sorry that I'm just myself. But I want to tell you the truth. And church, as we move into this truth, you will see much increase. So don't tell me this is low. I don't want to hear this. I'm a grace person. No. You are junk. You can't say that. I'm serious. You can't say something like that. You need to hear this and change your life forever. Amen. Praise God. Because I preached in some, in some one place and this guy said, no, we are grace people. We can't hear something like that. I said, who told you it's by grace? He said, oh, oh. one guy came and revealed to us. I said, Did, I said, I said, listen, God used a person. Why don't you honor the vessel? And now I'm speaking about the vessel. You, you, you cut me away. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. Can, 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 is, is it all right if I preach this? It's all right if I can share this. Yes. People, it's in the Bible. If I speak something that's not in the Bible, you need to, to remove it. But if it's in the Bible, in the New Testament, where well, see Paul is one who spoke about these things more than Moses. It's like some people, when you tell about giving, they say, oh, giving, no, it's under the law. Hey, wait, when, 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 when? Have you ever heard Moses say, thou shalt give? Because giving is not a thing of the law. It's the grace of God revealed. Moses never said, thou shalt give. He said all the laws, but he never spoke about giving. So Paul, the preacher of grace, is one who came and revealed the giving. Because giving is in grace. Can I speak this, church? All right, now. All right. Now look at this. Let's start from verse 7, the same chapter of 1 Corinthians. Who goes to a war any time at his own, on his, at his own churches? All right, now look at this. Let's say there is a war in, in another nation. Then the president of this nation stand up and say, I want every young person who want to volunteer to call for the war. And then you volunteer. Then you, you, you come and say, I, I want to go, I want to go. And then, there is, and then he stands in front of you. Then he tells you, you need to buy the camouflage. You need to buy a gun. Will you go for that war? But the preachers have been doing that. They've been fighting your own beckles at their own expense. No, you didn't hear me. You didn't. They've been fighting and helping your own life at their own expense. Hmm, it's hard to say this in the yeah. All right, but let me just go, keep on going. You'll get it on the way. Who feed the flock and eat not the milk of the flock? Now look at this. He says, who feeds a flock? And he eats not the milk of the flock. Imagine you feed a flock. You feed a flock, uh, let's say, the cows. You feed the cows. And the next thing you try to, That's what you say, huh? Eh? All right. 
you try to get the OBC. And the next thing, the cow says, no, it's not your VC. It's my VC. That's what people have been doing. You find the pastor preaching and doing everything, anointing you, doing everything, and praying the whole night, and praying all the time for you. And the next thing, you get some promotion. Now, you, now he says, hey, can you, can you give us some, some, some few dollars? Ah, uh, 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 pastor, ah, uh, this is for me and my family, oh. That's what people have been doing. I tell you, many preachers have been abused. You want the pastor doing everything, doing everything, doing everything for the people to the point that he carries you like this, to try to shake everything that is not right from you, and he put you on the ground. <laughs> And the next thing, something happens with you. They're like, oh, pastor, oh, no, 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 pastor, you, can, you cannot touch, you cannot come into my car. You cannot use my car. I want also to enjoy it. Ah, ah. Church, I tell you, we need to awaken to see that it is, it is a privilege to give the pastor a car. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. It looks like it's hard here. Um, <laughs> But let me just keep going. Maybe we'll get it on the way. Look at this. It's, ah, ah, let's go back. It says, who plants a vine and eat not the fruit of the, of the tree? Imagine, you plant, you know pastors, what they're doing, they're planting seeds in the lives of the people. And then you start growing, and now you say, I now know God. One, one guy, like, one guy stood in front of me, like, oh, we honor you, we honor you, prophet William. Oh, we, I honor you, my prophet. I, I play, honor you. I said, do you know honor goes with money? It's not a talk talk thing. <laughs> it's not a talk talk thing. It goes, you know what? It says, honor the Lord with your substance. So, so I have seen, I have seen it how people are like, oh, God has changed our lives through you. And show it that God has changed my life through you. Through it, I get it. Show it. You can show it. Someone say you can show it. Um, is this a hard message? Are you getting it? I tell you, God has given you all sins here that you've been working. I, if you look at that biography, you should, should see that your shaman has been working to you to come to where you are. It's not for his, it's not for the name of the ministry, it's for you. And I'm not preaching this for them. I'm preaching this for the body of Christ. For you to get something. Someone say, say honor. Now look at this. Say I these things as a man or do the law endorse Sam. That means now you say, oh, this is a grace preacher now. Oh, if grace is like this, let me go to the law. The law also requires the same. You need to feed the Levites. You need to feed the priest. The law will tell you are uh, the Levites are taken care of. If you now you say, oh, if grace is like this, let me run to the Levites. So the, the law will say are uh, the Levites are taken care of. Because here the Levites, you know what? Here in the New Testament, here the Levites is just pastors, prophets, um, evangelists, or the fivefold ministry. They are the priest of God. Amen. And if you say, ah, if in the New Testament is like this, let me run to the Lord. The Lord also will, will welcome you by saying, take care of the Levites. So you cannot run away from this truth. It's the truth. And it helps you. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I receive this word. Receive now look at this. Verse 11. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we reap carnal things? All right, the point the Paul is explaining, the first thing is started by mentioning an oxen. He says, if we have sown spiritual things, is it a great thing if we reap carnal things? You know what? We have been in places. I've been traveling the whole world. I tell you, I've been traveling the whole world. Sometimes I travel mostly on my own expense. All right, this is the thing. This is the thing. I, I, I have a church, a church in Zimbabwe, I have a church in Santin, we have a church in Bramfontein, we have a church in Lukal. And, uh, and we also preach in, we preach every, we preach uh, in Soweto, in Soweto, we preach in Mamalodi. We have meetings in those places. But let me tell you something, what I have seen, what I have seen. This is my experience with ministry. Yeah. 
Is that all right? You people are privileged. I can speak as, as like I'm just at home. All right. This is the thing. This is the thing. Paul is saying, if we have sold spiritual things, it's the great thing to reap a material thing. You found the pastor working in his church, doing everything for people to, for people to be blessed. And the next thing, the pastor, people don't know where the pastor reap. They think he will reap from God. That's awesome to think that way. But you need to think right. Because the, the Bible says, is it a great thing if we reap from you? Amen. Thank God you're doing that for your ministers. That's awesome. But we're just reminding you. So he says, is it a great thing if we rip that from, if we rip material? I found the people, uh, people saying, all right, uh, thank God that we have, um, um, we have our, our doctor here and praise the Lord. We, uh, we want to, for their, whatever they've been doing for us, we want to pray for them. How? Huh? How can you sow spiritual things and rip spiritual things? I'm not saying stop praying for them. But how is it if you can come and stand and say, hey, these people have been awesome. God, can we just make them reap today? Four people want to give cars to them. Four people want to give, a, hey. Four people want to give houses to them. Instead of saying, we want to also reward them with the word. I have a word for you, pass. Hey, shut up. Amen. People say we need, the, the preachers need to reap a material thing. Are you with me? They need to reap a material. Someone say material. Say material. It is so awesome that you can walk to, your, to the minister of the gospel and say, I want to bless you with this. Then imagine he gives you a prophetic word and says, Yes, a prophetic word. And then after that, you say, I want to give you also a prophetic word. We are not competing here with prophetic words. If you saw a spiritual thing, is it, is it a great thing if you respond to the material thing and say, yeah, it is. I was in this place, and the next thing is I was prophesying, people were writing prophecies. I'm like, who told you to do that? So they were writing prophecies down, and then during the preaching, as I was prophesying, they would bring the prof their prophecies on the, on the offering basket for me. And then after that, they, the pastor came and said, hey, people prophesied over your life years of prophecies. I took all those things. I, I, I said, it's not scriptural. I won't even read one. Even if they are correct or whatever, this is not scriptural. I've never seen a scripture like that. I would want to read this thing that is unscriptural. That, you, that you, you release a spiritual word and you reap a spiritual word. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I remember, I remember one day, one day to my mentor, this is what happened. This is what happened. God, I, I, I was blessed with this, with this awesome, awesome car. And it was awesome to me. Really awesome. I did everything. I did everything on it. Everything on it. Like, like you see, for me, I'm a man who loves speed. Sorry if you are a, if you are a what, traffic cop. You forgive me now, but I'm not speeding now. <laughs> but I love speed. I like, like, uh, I really love speed. I really love speed. That even when, when the guys come into my car, you see them, you look at the mirror, you see they're shaking like, because sometimes we go even up to 240. All right, traffic cop, forgive me. Uh, let this not be recorded at all <laughs> and be given to traffic cop. All right, so, 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 so you see, when someone really can, can go for speed, that means their car really need to be done very well. Amen. So the next thing, I did this car very well, everything very well. So that thing that you will, you will hear good sound. And the next thing, the next thing after I did it, I felt like, oh, Lord, now I just need to enjoy. God said to me, you've been sending your proph the prophecies to your mentor. I'm like, yes. He said, he loves it. It's awesome. But I want, him, I want you to bless him with the car. I said, oh. Should I buy him a car? That one. God, <laughs> that message is Benz. So the next thing, I knew how God operates. That when you, when you, when someone has released the awesome word over your life, you need to respond. So I was like, so the next thing, 
I, I walked to my wife. My wife was just busy in the, in the kitchen. I was like, hey, God just spoke to me on the dining. On the, that, when I was sitting on the dining, God said to me, we must give that message to, to. And my wife said, I knew it. My wife, I think she was so happy that it, there's no more speed in the house. So, <laughs> so like, I knew it. God, if it's God, we just cover it. The next thing we just found. You know, when, when, when you don't make such a phone call, you keep on end up deciding something. So we were to make a phone call, said, listen, we're going to take the car for the, for, the, for the service and everything. We're going to cover everything. And then the car is coming to you. And then like, and he said to me, what? Which car? Your favorite car. He's coming to me. What are you saying? No, I don't want it. I said, yes, that one. You are taking it. We're responding with it. And then, and then the next thing, you know what? I passed it to them. I felt so free that I could walk in, in the scripture than to be unscriptural. Are you with me, church? Yeah. Than to keep something and become unscriptural. I better be scriptural than to be unscriptural. And things just changed. We were trusting God that time we were given a quotation for our cameras, like 300,000. And we were trusting God for that. And I was willing that I will sell that, that car sometime and buy the cameras. And God said, you, do you sow to get or you sell to get? Mm, mm, mm. Hey, 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 hey. So the next thing, after we gave that car, one guy phoned me and said, Prophet, I, I don't have a passport to get to Zimbabwe, to get to where you are, but we can meet at Oratambo. I was in Zimbabwe at that time. He said, we can meet at Oratambo, you can fly. I will book your flight, you can fly, and we meet at Oratambo. Then, then the guy arranged the tickets and everything. Then I flew to meet him in Oratambo. Then it was, as we were sitting over the... Over the the cup of coffee. The guy said, I, you have been trusting God for cameras, I know. And I said, yes, yes, how do you know? He said, you have been trusting God for cameras. He said, look under the table. I have, I have, God has done everything. You know what, church? I looked under the table. I thought there was a camera inside the bag. And then later, when the guy has left, I started opening to check the top of the camera. But maybe the guy put me the right camera. And when I opened that bag, I found money on the cutter. Money like this. I was like, oh God, I thought you said, camera, forgive me. <laughs> and after that, I was blessed with even more cars. Amen. Church, we need to realize something about the gifts that God has given us. And one thing that I tell you this year. This year, even the guys there, the back, they can witness this. From the beginning of the year, every month I was receiving a car. Every month. Every month I was receiving a car. In, Ma, in June, we had, um, our, uh, my wife, I bought my wife a chip and it was taken away. It was taken away by, by the laws of the, of the nation of Zimbabwe. So they took it. And I forgive them. I do not talk about it. I forgive them even now. A new chip, and it was taken away. So the next thing, and we lost about it. We lost a lot of money in that process trying to redeem it. So I know that, hey, the money is even now coming to the point that it's exceeding, it's exceeding the, the, the cost of the car. And our equipment, that is our media equipment, worth $60,000. That's about, that's about 800 that has, that has about 900,000 rands, and all of it was taken. And then you know the next thing, I organized a Thanksgiving service just to thank God that he will not let me down. Amen. That he will not, not let me down. In that time, we had to sow, instead of trying to pay and whatever, I said, we're going to sow seeds. We're going to do a different thing. Amen. We called this man who preached to us the gospel. I called him. I said, I'm giving you an, another car. We gave two cars in that process. Where, other, where that car? Our, that car was the most expensive car that we ever had. And the next thing, I said, we're giving two more cars away. We gave two more cars away. And the next thing, the next thing after that, I tell you, I remember when I landed from Dubai. When I landed from Dubai, I told um, uh, Tamu there is one who does administration and everything. And, uh, 
and, uh, and to make sure the cars are in order, the vehicles for the ministry are in order. So this is the thing. Now I come back from Dubai. Then I found them. They moved, they moved their car from my parking, from the other parking. And they moved it. They put it in the other side. I'm like, why did you do this? I'm not in a position to buy a car. I don't want to buy a car now. They said, no, you're not buying a car, but God is going to bless you with the car. So we left a space for other cars that are coming. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. If you think I'm going to buy a car, I'm not going to buy a car. I said, no, 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 prophet. We just left a space for other cars that are coming. Two weeks after that, there was a chair parked there. God blessed me with that chair 500. And, and there was another car parked there. God just, there was just a multiplication in two weeks' time after that word. Church, I just want to tell you something that, uh, that uh, you can live as a Christian and live a scriptural life. Scrip you know some people, they despise scriptures. Scriptures won't fail you. Are you with me? They won't fail you. Go with me in the book of Hebrews 13 verse 7. Amen. Praise God. Someone say, I receive this awesome word. When you get to Hebrews 13, say amen. Or just wait for me. Because some of you are not even there, but they're saying, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, Hebrews 13, verse 7. Right, are you ready, church? Amen. This is what it says Remember them which have rule over you. Now, just stop. Anytime you think of someone who has rule over you, what do you think of? You think of president, you think of ministers in the, par in the, in the parliament. That's what you are thinking, eh? But it's not talk of that. The people that you have rule over you is not the president, actually. The president, the, the president, they rule over the nation, not over the children of God. Oh. All right. All right. All right. Let me not say that now. All right. Now look at this. It says, remember them that you have rule over you. Someone said me. me. Who are those people that you have rule over you? We have spoken unto you the word of God. Now look, it says, it says the people that have spoken unto you the word of God, they have rule over you. Someone say rule over me. <laughs> so they have rule over you. I tell you, church, um, we need to understand that uh, God, when he gives you preachers, it's not for them to become your friends. Thank God for the friendship spirit. But the thing is, you need to understand they have rule over you. For them to change your life. You need to submit. You need to come to that point of, of saying, these ones, they have rule over me. You know that some people say, oh, no, we're under grace. We don't need to submit brother William or uh, friend William. Understand something. The people that God has given you in your life, that they have rule over you. Well, verse 17, verse 17. Thank you, Jesus. Are you getting this? Yeah. Obey them that you have rule over. Verse 17 says, Obey them that you have rule over you. These are the preachers. Amen. And submit yourself. You know, these days, you go to churches, this word submission is no longer there. It's like the people say, hey, it's law. No, it's not law. It's something to help you, church. It's there in the book of Hebrews, in the book where Paul wrote about the blood, about forgiveness, about freedom. That's why he also wrote, submit to the people that have rule over you. Submit to them. Someone say submit. submit. Say submit. submit. Say submit. submit. Alright, say submit to them that have rule over you. Alright. It says, for they watch for your souls as they that must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. So now look at this. It says, those that have rule over you, they must do it with joy, not with grief. And I tell you that pastor, when he told me that he resigned and went to body, bought his farm, I was like, I, 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 I could not condemn him. I could not accuse him, church. I understood exactly what he went through. Yeah. But of course, on his side, also was supposed to stand and become a faithful servant in the faces of accusation. In the face of him. But that's not my part to look at that. My part is what the scriptures say. It says they shouldn't do with grief. 
They shouldn't, the pastors shouldn't work with grief in their hearts because of, of, of not submitting, because of you struggling to submit. So the thing is to open up and allow the ministers of the gospel to work with their hearts, with their hearts of joy. Amen? Because the minute there is no submission, the pastor works with grief. Like, oh, imagine I've been in that position where I enter the church, where I enter the church to preach in our church. I'm talking of our church. I can't speak of other churches um, now. Um, when I entered my church, and like, I'm thinking that person said this about me. I'm like, oh, and then there's grief in my heart. And God said to me, he said to me, you're trying to deal with grief. Start teaching the people to submit. So that you can do the work of the ministry with joy in their lives. And their lives will be changed. And let me tell you, we had a project, even today, we still have a project in our church called Feed the Ox. Feed the Ox. And that project has helped many people. There is a guy, there is a guy, when, uh, this, is why, this is how they call me in our church. This is like, uh, like the people that really we work with, not everyone, really work with, they call me Oxen. <laughs> they call me oxen the people that we work with you know so so this thing so so this guy this man he came to the church and 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 when he came to the church he was he was uh, he wasn't doing very well he was really bad he was he was really poor he was poor but this is thing this guy you will make sure the oxen is fed with the small he had. But as I'm talking, yesterday I spoke to him over the phone. He, telling, he told me, Prophet, you can't believe it. I have moved to a new house. Yeah. Remember our church was started in township and is still in the township of Nkulumane. And this guy, now he has moved to a big house on the high place. And I'm like, that's the anointing of feeding the ox. Church, can I tell you something? Some of you, you need to, to, to stop thinking this. That, uh, oh, my pastor is already rich. I don't need to, to take care of him. Hey, he, hey, you need to wake up and realize that you need to feed your oxen. You need to take care of your ox. He's still your ox. It's no, don't calculate he's wealthy. You need to make him, you need to make your ministers blessed someone say i take this word I say i take this word how many are taking this word really how many are taking this word is that all right is it all right to preach this in your church thank you all right the, the church we need to realize this is very important because many people can't listen to the gospel because they're always avoiding the preacher they always say, they always have something against the preacher. Why is he driving the best car why is he why is he like this why is he like this why is he like this one day one day I just met this pastor. This guy came to our church twice. And now I met his, this pastor just, just by, I just met the pastor. The guy said, he said, to me it's a shocking that you found a preacher is driving a GL class. I was like, my goodness, I, he did not even buy me the car. <laughs> he did not even contribute. I did not even take his tithes. But he's already complaining. He never gave any sin. I think he will be happy that on Monday I did away with that jail. I think when he hears that, that he, the guy is going to get so happy. But let me tell you something, church. You found people complaining about preachers. Oh, that preacher is driving this. That preacher, did you, did you saw the house he's living in? He is eating people's tithes. Hey, just get away. Wake up and realize that God wants you to also do the same and bless them with a better house than what they're living in. Amen. Than to complain and say they are making the poor poor. No. How can, you, how can a preacher make a poor poor? A preacher is sent so that they can make someone rich. Can I tell you something? I will speak about Tim. About the team and Patricia. The, the, you remember I said, I saw, when I came here, I saw like Tim and, and, Tim and his wife in America. You know, so that we're not here the first day, just forget, forget about this story. But now listen. Tim, he said, when they started the church, they came out on newspapers that they're making on the poor, poor. Because he, won, he was collecting offerings in a rural area. But now, he, they say he's making the poor rich. 
Amen. They say now he's making the boa rage. Like everyone who goes to that church, the minute Tim lays hands on him, he becomes very rich. But when they started, they said he's making the poor man poorer. Because of, calling, because of showing people the power of giving and the power of supporting the preacher. When I preached this message in his church, he stood up and he was crying and said, listen, when I said in the church, people, people accused me that I'm making them poor and I'm making myself rich. But now look at all these people, they were there, some of them, they stood with me. Look at it, what they drive. They don't speak of the cars, they speak of the, of the church that they have. Church, say I take this anointing. So church, I tell you, we can, uh, the church can walk in abundance, simple by that. Abraham received a prophetic word. But why didn't that prophetic word come to pass? He received it in chapter 12. Why didn't it come to pass the, in that time? And it took time, why? And, but until he received the gifts of God, God sent him, he came in, appeared in three. Three angels, amen. amen. And Abraham received and blessed them and they were fed. And the next thing, Sarah said I was pregnant. Are you getting what I'm saying? People, we need to receive the people that brings the gospel. Amen. We need to receive the people that bring the gospel. They are, you need to submit to them and they help you. Say, that's me. That's me. Well, in verse 24. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to keep going. Salute to all of them that you rule over you and all the saints. Now, look at this. It says, salute to them that you rule over you. That means respect to them that you rule over you. He is talking of the preachers of the gospel. Amen. He is talking of the preachers of the gospel. Church, imagine today if we can see these scriptures as God sees these scriptures. And we take this serious. And we stop this thing of, of being apologetic and say, no, this is not grace. This is pure grace, church. Amen. This is pure grace. He says, salute them that bring the gospel. Salute them. And you know what? I've, I've been in churches that don't honor the ministers of the gospel. When they, when they, when, that don't honor the ministers of the gospel. And I see that the people, most of the people, they struggle. And I've been in churches that really honor the ministers of the gospel. And the results that people are seeing is awesome. Amen. And I've been in places where people think you honor is abuse. And I tell you, such places, people really, they don't take the gospel serious. How can you think honor is abuse? You sh we should honor the gospel, the, the preachers of the gospel. Are we all right? And I've been in places where some people, they think, uh, me and my pastor, we are equal. We are one. We are equal. Have you ever heard such, such thing? Like, no, we are equal. All of us, we are sons of God. We are born again. He also, the pastor, is born again. He's my brother. We are equal. Have you ever heard such a chunk? It's not scriptural. It's not in the Bible. Paul is saying, obey them that, he, that are over you in the Lord. How can someone be over you in the Lord if you are equal? There are people that are over you in the Lord. Amen. And we need to, we need to receive them. And, and dealing with that, we changes everything. Can I tell you something? If you read even the book of Timothy, Paul was writing to Timothy. He says, don't receive an accusation against a preacher. Against an elder. Have you seen that scripture? It says, never receive an accusation against an elder. And you find some people, they just go quickly to receive an accusation. Someone phones you and say, hey, this person did this, and you receive an accusation. I wrote to my friend just before the service came, and I said, listen, I see you're quite maybe you received an accusation against me. But let me tell you something. You might be accusing me for a wrong thing. I said, I said there might be an ac wrong accusation against me and I just want to tell you that uh, the scripture says this. Because I read the scripture in the morning and I'm like, hey, this man, I feel like he's getting an accusation against me. And he's missing out because, because I'm benefiting also his life. Hallelujah. So church, can I tell you something? We need to come to a point where you don't receive an accusation against a preacher. Some people, they're all like, huh? Everything that they're talking is about. Did you hate what the, what the pastor so and so did? Amen. Did you hate what that brother, that, that prophet did? Did you hate what that apostle did? Did you hate what that person did? And you're always receiving accusation against a preacher. But the Bible says you are not supposed to receive any accusation. No matter how people accuse him, you say, no, I don't want to be part of accusation. I'm not the one to send an accusation against an elder. 
Because I'll tell you, church, is there in the Bible you can check? One guy, one guy, they were writing posters about this other prophet and stuff like that. And then I, and then I said, listen, who are you to accuse a preacher? Did you say, did you just went to him and speak to him and tell you, and tell you straight what, why he did what he did? Amen. Amen. So church, you are not the one to judge a preacher. A preacher is a man sent by God. Hallelujah. The saw Paul when he wrote, he wrote to Timothy. Timothy was a preacher. Timothy was a pastor. And then he said, Timothy, even if you are a pastor, don't receive an accusation against a preacher. Against an elder. People are getting accusation. Oh, I heard that my pastor did this. I heard that my pastor did this. I tell you, this is the thing, church. Even if he did it, it's not your business. Are you with me? Even if he did it, it's none of your business. That man, God can deal with him. God can correct him. The grace in his life will correct him. That's why the Bible said, Don't you have you not heard of the grace that I'm carrying? Paul said that in the book of in the book of Ephesians 3, verses 2. He says, Have you not heard of the grace that I'm carrying for the people? That grace can help the preacher. The preacher has a grace to help him. Are you with me, somebody? So that's the thing. You are not there to be one correcting preachers. To go around correcting preachers. You are, you are there to receive the preachers that God sent in your life. To receive the gifts that God gave in your life. Amen. Someone say, that's me. That's me. Say, that's me. that's me. I receive the preachers that God gave in my life. Say, I am blessed as I receive in Jesus' name. Church, can I tell you something? This is for your life. I did not arrange with, uh, uh, with, the, with the doctor and his wife that I would speak on this. We did not, he did not say, may you preach on this. I do understand. This I'm preaching according to God. In the morning, I opened my Bible and God said to me, and he said to me, never receive an accusation against a preacher. Never receive an accusation against a preacher. Never receive an accusation against a preacher. One guy came to me. My brother is pastoring a church in Zimbabwe. That's our main branch. That's a, that's a big church. That's, that's, a pre, that's a church with everything. And, and the next thing, they, this guy sends me a message and says, uh, uh, Pastor Govard did this. I'm like, who are you to tell me that? Who are you to tell me that? The Bible doesn't allow you to do that. And I don't want to hear it again. And I don't want to hear it. You are not allowed to tell me any. Uh, is an elder is watching over you. You are not allowed to tell me that. I'm a man of discernment. I can discern for myself. Yeah. I know when I sit in the church, I know what is wrong and what is not right. You are not the one to tell me what, uh, anything about your pastor. Yeah. Yeah. It's quiet in the house. Lord, how can I get them excited? But I'm not here to get you excited and not get this, this, the truth, the church. This is the truth, and that will help you to receive grace. That will help you to receive grace. That will help you to receive grace. Someone say, I receive grace. And no more accusation against any preacher. I receive preachers. And I receive, I say, say I receive my apostle. And I receive them. With gladness. That is for my benefit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's the thing, church. We need. I know some of you now are thinking of, when is it getting to the prophetic? I'm prophesying in your life. I'm prophesying in your life. Why, why do you, why, where are you hiring from? Where are you hiring to? Just sit and listen. I'm speaking as a prophet. This will help you to reach the heights, the high heights. Imagine having 20,000 of people that are not submitting. It's a disaster. It will kill one person. One person. Most of the pastors, listen, I have seen it. I have seen it. This is what I've seen. Most of the pastors died of a heart attack. If you read the Old Testament, if you read the, 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 the people that are in the cult of witness, the pastors, great men of God, great men of God, they died of a heart attack because of people, because of having many people that are not submissive. Then the end thing, oh, like, oh, why is that person saying this against me? I doesn't know, didn't know that I love him. 
I've done everything just to show him love. But the next thing they do this to me. Then many pastors died of heart attack. And I want to tell you something that we don't want that to continue. We don't want that to continue. We are the one to help our pastors to help us.